Hi guys. Hello. So welcome. We're doing Edge of the World today. I'm Liesl. And if this is your first time painting, let me know. Painting with us on Artist Palette. I'm using primary colors, red, blue, yellow, black, and white. And a few brushes that I use usually some sort of large, a large flat, or <clears throat> you can use a filbert large, and then for medium I use something more round, and then a detailed brush. Hi Lynn, hello. You as well. Okay, so from all over the place, it's great. And make sure you have your water cup and a paper towel. And if you're wondering what paint I use, I use Start Acrylic Paint. I use it, uh, I get it from Curry's and um, I know that some places don't have Curry's, but this stuff's good. <laughs> Oshawa and Toronto, that's close to me. Great. I am from Whitby, Ontario. So just getting my paints on my palette. Okay, some people for your first time, that's welcome. Thanks for joining. I see familiar names. That's okay, you can watch this later if you can't join or complete it. It'll be, it'll remain up forever pretty much. So we're gonna put it on our YouTube channel later on as well. Okay, so we'll get started in just another, I think another minute. All right, let me know. You can give me thumbs up, the like button, heart button, if uh, you're ready to go. Got all your stuff ready, maybe a drink of some sort or a snack. Okay. So here's the painting again. I use a 16 by 20 canvas, but you can use any size, any size works. Okay, perfect. I'm going to move this and put my fresh canvas up. So I'm going to start with my large brush and I dip it in my water and then get some of the water out. And now I'm going to mix most of my background color. So I'm going to start off pretty light and you can adjust the colors to your liking. I'm going to take my yellow 
put it to the side and a scoop of white so you get more of a brighter yellow and I just got a little bit of blue in there so I'm just going to do that again white put it right here a little dip of yellow get a bright yellow start with that and I want to mark off my horizon line which is I think this is good about halfway might be hard to see but halfway should be fine and the way I do my strokes in the sky I kind of do like a little flicks and crisscrosses starting from the very left and then dragging it towards the right side a little bit. So to start off with that. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> the Medusa, yes. I am using acrylic, yep. So you can go back and pause. You can um, take your time painting. It's going to remain up too. So if you need to pause and take your time doing a step, you can do that with this video. And we are starting, yeah, just uh, go back and you can, you can see what we did before. So I started with that light, bright yellow on the very left. And I'm going to make my way over to the other side just by adjusting the color and making a bit more purple as I get over to the right side of my canvas. I'm going to take just a little tiny dot of red with my bright yellow. I need to mix a bit more, that's okay. It's going to get a bit more yellowy golden kind of orange. You can always add a dot more red if you want it to be a bit more warmer looking. So I'm going to start outside of this bright yellow. You can see it's a bit more of like a cheesy color. And I'm going to drag it into my yellow by doing the same technique, the X's, the crisscrosses. So it has a bit of a blend in there while the yellow is still wet. So it looks more golden. So I drag it over quite a bit. Yeah, lemon yellow works. It's a bright yellow. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining with me again. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to be adding a bit more red into here. I'm going to take a bit more yellow, a little bit more white, and a bit more red. So you'll see that it actually turns into more of a darker orangey red color, but I'm not going to go too orange. I actually want to start going a bit more purple. So I'm going to take more red. See, that's a bit more of a coral color. I'm going to wash off this brush 
so that I don't have too much of the paint into my brush when I start making a bit of a purple mixed with it. So that's just taking some blue. You have to be careful because it usually would make more of a brown. But I just keep adding a bit more red until it turns with that bit of blue so that there's only a little bit of that orange in there. You want it mostly red. That's really key here because you get a softer looking purple instead of a very vibrant purple. But if you just want to do a light purple without any yellow or orange in it, you can mix that together. I just like the kind of soft pastel look it gives with a little bit of orange in there, but it's mostly red. So remember, mostly red. And then you just to make it a bit more purple is just that little dip of blue. Too much blue, it will be more green and not purpley looking. So I'm going to start over here, test it out, and if you if you like it, you can use this. It's um it's pretty dark dark as you can see. So what I do is I just take a little bit of white to lighten it up and start dragging it into my yellow a little. Something like that. So I'm going to just drag some of this purple into my yellow a little bit and then I'm going to blend it a bit more. I know the background is like really complicated but after we've done the background it's going to be easier. I'm going to, after I do this, I'm going to actually make more of a pink color to blend this out to make it a bit more of a, a nicer looking color in the background. And I don't even have to wash off my brush. I just take some red and some white to make more of a lighter pink. Another scoop of white. I want to keep it pretty light. You can always go darker. So now you can see a bit of the pink in here. Just kind of blends with the purple. Makes it more softer and you can see I'm just lightly brushing it. Doing the same crisscross kind of strokes. Okay, so if you're joining late, that's okay. You can actually um, trace back on this video. You have the ability to basically re rewind it and um, go to the beginning if you need to. Uh, another thing you could do is if um, you didn't want to make that purple and it's too complicated, mixing with the yellow it makes more of a green or the color that you don't like, you can just stick with more pinks and then eventually go to purple. So I'm going to finish this off with more of a purple on the very right side. I can I like to mix in the same spots I've already mixed my paint. So right over top of my previous pastel looking purple, I'm just going to add another scoop of red and a little dip of blue to make it a bit darker. Start from the very right side.
and just drag it in. Mix it with some of that previous colors. So if you lightly press into your previous colors, you get more of a subtle look blending into it instead of super dark. And you can see I'm adding this hint of purple throughout my pink area and it makes it just a bit more purple looking. If you really like purple, this is just follow me and do this, but you don't have to do the exact colors I'm doing. So basically, layering helps get these interesting purples, even though purple and yellow usually just make brown and green colors. It's not making that when you just blend it in a certain way that you want more red instead of blue. If you put too much blue, it turns green. I would say this paintbrush that I'm using is probably a size, probably a size 16 or 18. I'm, I'm not sure I've had it forever. So to make purple, it's just red and a dip of blue, big scoop of red and a small little dip of blue to make this purple. It's mostly a pinky red purple. Too much blue with the yellow, like I said before, and making oranges is going to make green. So try not to put too much blue in there, just very little. So I'm going to let that dry. And what I do is I move on to the water to get a base coat of it before I start doing the mountains up here. We want to wait for this to dry, of course. It's a completely different color against the background. It's more of a green. And I'm going to show you the water again. So the water, as you can see, it has a cool like curve to make it look like the water is falling down, making it misty. And then we have all these interesting colors through it, like some more greens, teals, pinks, and purples from the sky reflecting into the water. That's always a good thing to do, is to make it look like all the colors are reflecting into the water. Yes, this is a flat brush. Well, thanks, Dana. So for the water, let's start with our blue and a little bit of white mixed so we get not too light of a blue but just a a sky blue this is the darker blue that i had it was just a phthalo or primary blue is great use that and a tiny dip of water with your paint i'm going to start from the edge And you can lightly press over to the other side for your horizon line. So I'm going to start from the side, just drag it across. But I'm not going too far across because I'm going to outline where my water is going to fall. Just mixing more, a little bit of white with my blue. And this is um, just going to make a little bit of a curve.
So something, something kind of like that. I think I'm going to have it dip down a bit more. It's easily lead adjustable. You can easily change it up, make it a bit different. And then I'm going to go right up to that line. Straight across, keeping all my lines pretty level with the canvas. I don't want them too wonky. So we have the start of a waterfall. And I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. And hopefully this is pretty easy to follow along. Except, the, like I said, the sky was a bit more complicated if you're doing the mixing that I was doing. But you can always simplify it if you want to make it softer tone, like more vibrant, I guess, and not as pastel looking with the yellow mixed with the purple. All right. That's good, Colleen. You can, I know some of this is at a daytime event. We try to do earlier times sometimes because of different time zones. And I feel like a lot of you are in different time zones watching this right now. So I'm going to continue on. When we start doing the, the water falling down, try to remember it's just, um, you're going to make it look like it has a bit of a bump, but it's going straight down. We're not doing it angled. It's all straight. So it's all going to be straight down like this. No matter where you're putting the water falling, I'm going to take just some more white with my light blue because I don't want it too dark for this step and my white is clogged so just give me a second okay I'm still using the same brush I'm gonna take my white with a bit of that lighter blue that I had. So it's just a, a bit lighter, more of a brighter blue. Oh my goodness, Michelle, <laughs> 6.30 or 6.50 AM, wow. Okay, so like I said, they're all gonna be straight coming down. And I like to use the flat side of my brush. So you just let it, let it go. We're going to add more to it later. Just start with this straight down because back here it would be all just coming straight down. But then what I do is I start making a bit of a bump before it goes straight down to make it look like it's going over something as a bit of a curve. So bit of like a curve and then straight, bit of a curve and straight. And then as I get towards here, I gotta, I gotta make it so that if your lines are going straight like this, the water would just curve down this way a bit more. So hopefully this is all making sense. You just have to imagine like the water's flowing here and then it's going to go straight down. So right here, you're not going to see too much of the water going down here because it's the angle that it's on. So it's all, so it's all going to just, you're not going to see where this falls down. But this, you're just going to put the line straight and then see that curve straight down. 
Let's fill it up and down strokes right here. Oh, thanks, Michelle. So if you use this light blue to streak it into your darker blue that you had, it kind of helps you realize and envision how this is going to be falling down for a waterfall effect. I'm just pulling all of this down, keeping them all straight in this section. Now it makes a bit more sense and it looks more like a waterfall. And we haven't even done too much. We just did base coats here. So I'm just gonna pull a bit more of this down because we can always create the mist over top. We just want to get a bit more of a base coat, let very light blue. And I actually want to go to Niagara Falls Although this is clearly not Niagara Falls, it has a giant mountain in the back, but it reminds me of Niagara Falls. I want to go in October. If you have ultramarine and cobalt blue, I would use cobalt. Yeah. Ultramarine gets. Um, not, doesn't make a good green and it's really really dark it actually keeps it dark no matter how much you lighten it up it looks just like a darker violet blue so that's the start of that I'm actually going to not use this brush anymore pretty done with it right now if you have a smaller flat that's great I like these more flat brushes for the water because it gets thin lines. Even a filbert, it's flat as well. It's just rounded, but it's still got a flat tip and edge to it. So you probably went to the um, American side of Niagara. It's very nice there. I, of course, am Canadian, so I was on the cooler side. I actually never been on the American side, so I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to keep streaking um, in my water. We want to start with some white, I think is good. And I'm, I'm switching to my, that square flat that I was showing you. So I'm just taking some white. And you'll see that we want to create those streaky lines. In the water. It helps if uh, we wait for it to dry. Before we keep putting more white onto it, as long as you have some of those lines in there, it starts looking more like water. And in here, I'm going to be now just putting in some color of usually, like I said before, some of that purple and maybe some yellow and pink or what else did I put? Teal. Teal is nice. So let's do a bit of that purple first, what we did in the in the sky. If you have it left over, perfect. You could just pick it up and start using it. Or you could just make a new one. You can just make a regular purple. You, I like to use flat right now. Streak that in. to follow the groove of all my strokes I did with that blue to make it look like it's pouring down 
straight down this waterfall. When you get here, you don't need to do that. You just need to go when it's angled like this, because it wouldn't you wouldn't see it fall. You're going to just do right kind of to the edge. So add as much of this purple, maybe any color that you want to add. You want to put some teal in there. Whatever you want to do, it will look great, I think. Colorful waterfall is always pretty to look at, honestly. I think it just adds to that rainbow effect that you would see in a misty waterfall or sky after it's rained or something. So you always see a bit of color, I think in waterfalls. I'm just going to streak some of this in. And I'm going to switch to, let's do, the blue is still wet, so actually I'm going to wait on that yellow. Um, I'm going to do teal, that's a good idea. To make teal, you're going to use your light blue, you can just take some more blue in a little tiny dip of yellow. Too much yellow, it will be green. Make it as light as you like by just adding more white. And then... Keep going, just add some of it in. You can make it even lighter. It comes, kind of pops out a bit more. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Styrofoam plate does work very well for not really mixing up colors. I am still using the same phthalo blue, primary blue. Okay, I'm going to do my white one more time before I start on my mountains because this should be dry and I'm hoping that all yours are dry too. I'm just going to put in some white. I like that really high contrast of highlight in the water. All right, now I'm going to work on my mountains. We'll come back to this, trust me, we're gonna come back to it and we're going to put the mist in here. We're gonna make more misty look. It's actually really fun, it's pretty cool. And just maybe a couple more streaks in here if you think it's necessary. 
I'm going to put more of a dark blue to make, uh, again, the contrast stand out a bit more. So for the mountains, you can switch to any brush that you want. Depends on the size of your canvas. You can use your round, you can use your larger brush, like a filbert or even a flat. I'm going to start with my round because I, I feel like it can shape pretty well. I like it. Let's start with um, some greens. I like to do a bit more of a teal green before I put accents of just a forest green and other lighter greens to make it look like it has a lot more depth. It's just a big scoop of blue and I mix in the same teal spot or blue spot. I like to keep using the same spots and some white. bit more yellow so it's not too of a blue color. I just want it to have kind of like a teal looking. You can see it's a bit more on the blue side. So this one, uh, it's pretty high up. And I just follow it down, make it a little bit bumpy here and there. And then the next one, kind of right here. And then I have another one here. Sort of like that. And the way you want to, make sure you add white into it, only because you can see it a lot better when you put over top of your purple. So you can't see the purple anymore. If you don't add any white, it doesn't really cover as well. So I'm gonna fill this in, going with the groove of the way the mountain is flowing. So with the up and down motion, following from the peak to the bottom, And we will be adding a shadow, but let's start with that. Making more of that kind of tealy green color for the rest of them. And it's really okay if you can't see the line between the two mountains anymore. Just go right over it. We can always make it again. a little peekaboo. Oh, it's okay, Kathy. Um you could Try again later, or I think if you just start with the straight lines here, that's a good start. And for the green, it was uh, blue and a little bit of yellow, mostly a bit more blue 
and some white. Okay. Now, while this is drying just for a minute, before we do the shadow and the highlights and different greens in there, um, in here, this is pretty dry, I'm switching back to my large square. And this is where, this is actually pretty fun. You're going to take plain white on your brush and I'm going to just lightly coat it so you'll see it's coated but also I'm just going to take a bit of my paper towel and wipe a lot of it off so it's not too much on my brush and what I do is I just this is where I make that foamy look mostly at the bottom it's going to be mostly white at the bottom gonna take a bit more you can start with a bit more on the very bottom so it's that's where most of the water is splashing upwards and then it's going to start fading so when you just get a little bit down here then you're going to wipe off some of that white and then when you press it's not as much paint it's a bit more transparent and it looks like it's just very misty You can go as high up as you like. Very spongy kind of texture. And you can see a bit more closer now. So it's kind of like you can see a little bit of the water through it, but it's kind of more faded now. Hey, you can paint this on paper for sure. Well, thanks, Francie. It's great to hear. So after that is done, and you feel like that's good, you can always come back and do a second coat if you want it to be more, um, you know, misty looking and more water splashing upwards, foaming up. Wait for it to dry, then do a second coat. Otherwise, it doesn't really change. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my flat square to do a couple more streaks in the water with the darker blue or maybe a dark purple is nice. Um, I like to paint, I like to paint a lot of things, I don't really have a preference. I like ideas for painting so that I can get more ideas but because I have to, I paint pretty much every day, it's hard to keep coming up with new ideas. I'm going to take my blue and a little bit of red. Blue, red. You could just do blue and black if you wanted. I actually don't want any white in there, so I'm just going to make that again. Take my blue, some red, make it nice and dark. It looks actually mostly blue and it kind of looks really dark. That's dark purple, it looks really deep. Streak very lightly press and you'll notice that it actually makes a good dark color. It looks mostly blue, there's just a bit of red. You 
to press very light over here as it gets further away and you can start streaking some down with the waterfall not too far down I feel like it's not going to get too dark towards the bottom but just a little bit And then right here, I just create a little bit of some lines just on the edge of this waterfall area. I'm going to darken this spot up a little bit more. I want it to be a bit more shadow down here. So just adding a bit more of these streaks at the very bottom. Mostly away from the, the light. I feel like more of the my light source is kind of around here and it's a bit more shadowed. Yeah, it reminds me of Niagara Falls. That's okay, just trace back to the foamy part. Stephanie. And I will add a little bit of my light yellow. So that was that lemon yellow or very bright yellow that we started with in the beginning. Just yellow and white, mostly white with a little bit of yellow, so it's super bright. And you can put a little bit of this in. Try to go, again, like I said, mostly white, so it's not too yellow. A couple of these lines, this is my light source, right? So I think I would have a bit more of it in here, reflecting. All right. I think that's good enough. You can go on and on pretty much forever. It's just adding streaks into the water. It's endless, basically. It's a little bit closer. And the one thing that I do, do like to do is put some more white back here. Keep it bright over on that side. Now I can go back to my mountains. I want to make a shadow and then put some highlights in there. The shadow is 
easy to do because it's very dark. You can take your blue, yellow, make more of a green, a little bit of black, and you get it. Only, it actually looks kind of black, but it's actually got a, like a in the light has a tint of green in it. So we're going to do that. Maybe if you add a little bit of white, it will make it a bit more of like a see that little hint of green now. Right in there. I'm trying not to tip this too much, but there we go. Yeah, it's a little mix of a couple things in this painting. So I'm going to start, test it out. It's actually not that dark. It looks dark around the palette, so you can add a bit more black. I like it to be pretty dark. And I'm going to go just along the bottom a little bit here. And I want to, first of all, just lightly outline this a little bit. And now, like I said, with the groove of the mountain, I'm going to start making these little kind of indents in the mountain. Start shaping it, making it look bumpy and uneven terrain. Basically how a mountain is. So this is a lot of it, but I will be streaking in some lighter colors. And then a little bit over here. See how they're going up and down with the mountain. Gives it more height. Appears to have more height. This one, just going to shadow it more on the bottom. Even the lights there, I feel like this is more of a silhouette mountain because of the way it's positioned. It's kind of in front of the sun, so it's not really highlighted too much, except more on the edges, which we will get to. So they're just a bunch of streaks going up and down with the groove of the mountain to start. And just give that a minute. And now for some more highlights. Let's start with some yellow and white with a touch of blue. I like just, um, sometimes their contaminated white is fine because it makes interesting colors. So that is more of a lime yellowy green. Still kind of a bright yellow. That's for a good, really bright highlight. And then something else that I mixed that I have on the side, so you can mix a new one. Don't want hair in my palette. Yellow and a bit more blue, so it gets more of like an actual green, some white. So basically you want to have some mixture, different greens to choose from and use. Well, that's just orange. Don't really care for that one. Yellow and some blue without any white and you get more of a darker green but not nearly as dark as what we were doing with the black. So that's just a couple of colors to have in use from. So that's just like a no white added to your green with yellow and blue. 
yellow and blue with white, and this is just very little blue, yellow and white, so you get a lime green. I'm going to start with my darker green. That's the green with no white added to it. So it's, um, it's a good color to put in. I just uh, streak it in with my thinner brush so that I can get it a little bit bumpy and different color in the, the hills here. And mixing it with some of my darker green, which is with the black. Kind of smoothing it out a bit more. See, I don't really have much direction, I just kind of put it on. Just let it do its thing. Basically covering some of the darker green, letting it blend with it, adding this color right over top, breaking up all that darkness, because we're going to keep going lighter from here. Wash that off, move on to my next color. It's already got a lot more depth just with two colors. Now I'm switching to that medium, the next lightest color, which was this one that I made. So, of course the, the light source is there, so most of this is going to be on this side. I'm just going to add it in. Start making it a bit brighter, popping it out more. I don't mind if it's mixing with the other colors. It's actually a good thing. You get different colors in the in between that. And for this one, I just like to do more on the sides here. Leaving it mostly dark. Now if you want to pop out some more of that teal color, it's barely showing anymore, you can just make it again and put some back in. And now I'm going to that bright lime green. 
very yellowy looking. Streaking it in mostly where my light source would be shining on it. So my very left side, just a couple coming into the right, but most of that side, keeping this side a bit more darker. Nice pop of contrast. And if you need to add any more of a certain color, you can go for it. Sometimes I just add in some more of my darker green. Yeah, I think that the darker green actually makes it look a bit more bumpy and mountainous like when you put it in between this is some streaks of the lighter colors so and that is something you can keep playing with and it's hard to stop hard to stop painting i'm just going to leave it and leave it alone and we're almost there actually i just realized that we're almost done so um we just have to we're just going to make a little bit of some birds like a couple of birds you can make as many as you like I'm going to use a very small brush this one is good and after the birds we can do a couple little distant trees right here if you want to and you guys can show me your results whenever you're done it's nice to see the different interpretations and colors that we put in maybe you'll paint with us again you can give us a like on Facebook or follow us. We do lots of events. You can check them out on our events tab. So I'm taking black on my very detailed brush. And the way I do these birds, I like to do kind of like little V's with a soft curve for a wing flapping over. Some of them can be a bit more wider, you know, it depends on how they're flying and there three is always a good number odd numbers are great like five is good And now for the last little detail for some trees, which is optional. I'm going to take still a small brush, but not quite as small because I don't need it that detailed. It's uh, quite a big, small brush. So you can pretty much make anything work here. Well, thanks, Jackie. It is a fun painting for sure. And I'm still just going to take some black. For the trees in the distance, you can, I like to just tap and make little lines coming up. Don't go up too high, then it will make your mountains look smaller and not as far away. So just very distant little trees just around here. Go along the 
bottom. Just get it kind of darker there so it looks more like a forest and more full. So pretty much right up to this one and then kind of stopping. You can keep going if you want to, but it's going to stop around here. Yeah, I can actually add a couple more birds. Why not? I'll do five. And then just tapping using the sideways. You can see it makes kind of like when you do it side to side, it makes little like wannabe branches on top of these sticks that we made. And it's all very abstract and far away, so you don't need to spend too much time on this. I actually just make a bit of a lighter gray and just highlight so it looks like it stands out a bit more. So it's white with your black. You just lightly, see I'm just going to tap over top to have it stand out a little bit more against all the darkness. So do as many of these distant trees as you like. They're mostly just sticks and we get the gist of it. Trees I just did in black and I highlighted with just a lighter gray, just adding a bit of white. I mean, it's very optional to do and they're not that noticeable, especially with what's going on. Now, for the birds again, I'll just do them, I'll just do two more so I can make it a uh, five, just, yeah, an odd number of five is good. So I will do something like that. And the next one, I think I'll just put smaller. You want to have different sizes too. You don't want them all the same, like you copy pasted every single exact style of the way the bird's flying. You just want to have it a little bit different. And then it's very, you know, nice little finishing touch in the background. Yeah, so thanks for joining guys and I will keep this up, put it to our YouTube channel or just Paladurm if you want to see more of our videos there. We have more there, we have more on our Facebook, we have lots and lots of events. So maybe I'll see you again. Thank you guys. You can post your results in the comments. You can show you can share as as a personal message. Bye.